Today's story is Our Librarian Won't Tell Us Anything, written by Tony Buzio, and illustrations are by Sachiko Yoshikawa. On my very first day at Liberty Elementary, Mr. Dickinson sent me down to the Library Media Center. Bring back a couple of books you'll enjoy, Robert. You bet. I hurried down the hall after Carmen Rosa Pena, who wasn't about to wait for me to catch up. Through the double glass doors, I could see the story alcove, the animal skeleton collection, 12 student computers with swivel chairs, and thousands and thousands of books. Everywhere kids were reading on beanbag chairs, typing at computers, or standing in the checkout line. More kids crowded around a tall blonde woman holding a video camera. Her tarantula earrings dangled below her rhinestone glasses. Carmen was halfway across the room when I skidded to a stop in front of her. What do you like to read? Soccer books and sports illustrated for kids, she said. Why do you care? I wondered if you knew where the animal books are. Not a chance. Oh, that's okay. I'll ask the librarian, I said. Mrs. Skoromsky? Carmen rolled her eyes. Don't even bother. Our librarian won't tell us anything. She charged off to the shelf under the Christine Lily poster. What? Librarians help people, like police, but without the trouble. I marched over to the crowd surrounding Mrs. Skoromsky and waited my turn. She finally glanced at me over her sparkling glasses. Oh, new to Liberty School? Yep, I responded. Mr. Dickinson's class. Great! She stuck out her hand. I love fourth graders. What do you like to read? She asked. Huh! Carmen was wrong. Do you have any animal books? I asked. Annie? Huh, we've got so many animal books. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish. I could lock you in here for a year and you'd still be reading. Well, if you didn't start first. Awesome, I said. Mammals, please, where are they? Follow me. She marched off across the room. I was so busy gloating in my mind that I smacked right into Mrs. Karumsky when she stopped at the first bank of computers. Have a seat. She swiveled a chair and gave me a gentle push into the cushion. Wait. I bounced up. Cool earrings, but not much of a memory. You were taking me to the mammal books? She twirled the chair again and pointed. Sit. Her tarantulas bobbed near my cheek. She pointed to an icon on the screen. Click the online catalog and type mammals, M-A-M-M-A-L-S, into the subject search box. Just then, Carmen poked my ribs and hissed in my ear. See, I told you she wouldn't tell you anything. Mrs. Karumpski just smiled. I clicked search and got a long list of books. I chose a few titles and read more about them. Then I wrote down the call numbers and titles of the books I wanted on the catalog slip she handed me. Oakley Duckley, she said at last. Now use the shelf labels to find them. Um, Mrs. Garumsky, I asked you to show me where they are. She smiled. Yes, you certainly did. I headed back to class with a stack of books, one on the duck-billed platypus, one on lesser bush babies, and one from the display shelves on naked mole rats. Whenever I used the catalog to find books after that, Mrs. Skorumpsky said I was a library success story. Who knew what she meant by that? When Mr. Dickinson announced desert animal research and predator prey teams, I knew just the animal for me. Mr. Dickinson told us that Mrs. Skorumpsky was scheduled to give us 100% of her attention for our library research on Thursday afternoon. Huh, said Carmen Rosa Pena. 
she won't tell us anything. That's enough, Carmen, Mr. Dickinson said. We each started by taking notes on the predators of 10 desert animals of our choice. When we finished, we joined predator-prey pairs. I'll be a predator, Carmen said. Big surprise, I thought. When I reported that poisonous, rufous beaked snakes eat naked mole rats, she signed on to be my partner. Oh, joy. Mr. Dickinson and Mrs. Skorumpsky handed out a sources criteria sheet. I wrote down our names on the sheet and hopped up from a chair. Where are you going? Carmen said. Well, since I've read my Naked Mole Rat book three times, and I have animal encyclopedias at home, I only need an online article. Well, don't bother asking Mrs. Skorumpsky. She won't tell you anything. I shrugged and walked over to the computer. She swiveled the chair and said, sit, and close the catalog. The big blue E will open the kids' search engine. I typed naked mole rats in the search box. Up popped a list of links. I clicked on each one to see the article. Oakley duckley, she said. Now which article has the most interesting facts? Print that one. Didn't I ask you to find me a good article? Mrs. Skorumpsky smiled. Yes, you certainly did. Back in class, I shared my printout with Mr. Dickinson. I also tucked a poisonous rufous speaked snake article into Carmen's desk, but I didn't tell her who it came from. Each time I helped my classmates after that, with a catalog at the nonfiction shelves or online, Mrs. Skorumpsky said I was a library success story. Who knew what she meant by that? When Mr. Dickinson assigned a desert animal multimedia product, Carmen, Rosa Pena, and I finally had a huge fight. It's not fair. I missed the multimedia production lessons last fall, Carmen said. No problem, I said. Since I hadn't even moved here yet, Mrs. Skorumpsky will definitely help us. Are you crazy? Carmen shouted. I told you, she never tells us anything. Huh, she may not tell you anything, I yelled, but she always helps me. By the time I got to the library media center, Carmen was already there, taking notes on the poisonous Rufus beat snake again. Carmen looked up. Oh, look, it's Mr. Library Success Story. Don't tell me your research isn't done. I sniffed. I'm here to ask Mrs. Skorumpsky something. Don't even bother, she said. I didn't wait for her to finish as I stomped off to the computers holding our multimedia product format sheet. I typed multimedia into the search engine. I groaned when I saw the enormous list of links. Mrs. Skorumpsky screeched to a halt behind me. What's up, Robert? Oh, will you help me choose a multimedia product? I asked. Sure, she said. Come with me and bring Carmen along too. Ugh, do I have to? I asked. Mrs. Skorumpsky just patted my shoulder. Carmen scowled when I tapped her on the arm but she followed Mrs. Skorumpsky and me to the media lab. Mrs. Skorumpsky connected the data projector to her laptop and dimmed the lights. Then she grabbed two DVD discs and a CD from the AV shelves. Oakley duckley, her eyes sparkled in the darkroom. Let's view some student samples of each product and you two can decide. Hey, that's a great way to choose, I said. Mrs. Skorumpsky smiled. Yes, it certainly is. By the time Carmen and I headed back to class, her grumpy mood had dissolved into excitement about making a claymation film. Carmen said poisonous rufous speaked snakes would be easy to make out of clay, like pretzel rods, but without the salt. And she'd even scheduled us to meet with Mrs. Skorumpsky the next day so we could begin filming. 
Last week, when Allison Chen moved to Liberty School, Mr. Dickinson sent her down to the Library Media Center with me. Mrs. Skorunsky tells me Robert is a library success story, Mr. Dickinson said. Who knows what she means by that, I said, as I walked down the hall with my new friend Allison. You're going to love Mrs. Skorunsky. Our librarian can teach you anything. I hope you enjoyed Our Librarian Won't Tell Us Anything. Now it's your turn to go to your librarian to find out everything.